My name is Melody and welcome back to Strawberry Lemon. Today I have a book review for y'all. I think this is my second book review on this channel so I'm a little nervous about this. I don't know how it'll go. I already filmed this once with editing and I was like hmm. I was a bit too excited and my thoughts were all over the place so let's try that again. So here I am trying this again. But I really, really love this book. It was five stars. It got me out of my reading slump. It got me excited to read again, to film again, which is why I'm here. And just, I don't know, watch bookish content and just get back into the bookish community and everything. So I had to do a book review. I feel like I really wanted to spread my love for this book and hopefully get other people to read this book if they haven't. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'll try my best. But for this review, I am going to be reviewing The Blood Trials by N.E. Davenport. And as I said already, five freaking stars. It was so good. So this book is an adult sci-fi slash fantasy. I going in didn't know that it was an adult book. I thought it was a young adult and I love that it was an adult sci-fi fantasy book because I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much if it was young adult because I needed all of that blood and gore and gruesomeness and yeah, I'll go further into that later. But a lot is going on in this book so I'll give a premise kind of thing, explain a little bit about what's happening in this book. So we follow a 19 year old girl named Akena in this book and all of her life she has been training to become a Praetorian. So a Praetorian is they basically have a military and then there's the elite of the military and there's the elite of the elite of the military. So it's really really hard to become a Praetorian. They are all highly skilled soldiers and in order to become a Praetorian, you have to go through these trials. So I don't think they're actually called the blood trials, but a lot of people die during the trials. So it kind of makes sense that the book is called the blood trials because I think they started with a thousand and some pledgers to become a Praetorian at the beginning of the book. And you end with like 200-ish people still alive. You go into these trials, you either come out dead or you come out a Praetorian. There's no no other option in this book, which doesn't really make sense because they could have been perfectly good soldiers anyways. Why? Why do you need to kill them? I don't know. But it makes this book really interesting to read. So we follow Kenna through these trials, but there's also a lot more going on than that. She faces a lot of discrimination from the people that are her hosting the trials to her classmates and peers and everyone because she is not a full-blooded Marinian so they live in the Republic of Marines so they're called Marinians but she is half Canadian so she has a darker skin color and everything and that is looked down upon on in the society and she faces a lot of discrimination for that and there's also a lot of sexism in the book so she also has being a female against her there's only a couple females out of the thousand people that pledge there's not that many females and yeah on top of that she is also trying to hide the fact that she has powers so the republic of marine has a history of being in a war against the blood emperor and the blood emperor he had powers given to them by the gods and the goddesses and the pantheon and the higher ups i don't really know how it works but they have powers where he can like mind control people basically so the republic of marine given the history and everything they broke away from all of the magic and stuff so if you have magic you're like automatically dead. They will kill you. Like you're murdered. Like it's a big no-no if you have powers. But she does have powers and she is trying to hide it. And she has been able to hide it for so long because of her grandfather. So her grandfather who raised her and brought her up and everything helped her hide these powers. And he was able to do that because he probably held one of the highest positions that you could have in their society. He was really high up. He had extraordinary military prowess and people were not happy about that they weren't happy that a not full-blooded Marinian had such high power they didn't like the reforms that he was trying to make to the society there was a lot going on in that society so he was trying to make that society better for everyone and nope 
other people that are high up we're not having that and we find out in the beginning of the book and it's also said in the synopsis so it's not really a spoiler but we find out that her grandfather is murdered this high up man that probably held one of the highest powers they could have in that society he got murdered probably because of the reforms he was pushing nobody wanted to do what he wanted to do they liked their society how it was and also because a lot of them were just racist in general and yeah we find out that he is murdered or at least believed to be murdered and Akena kind of just wants to figure out who murdered her grandfather and get revenge and I think that is all of the major points of the premise so we follow Akena mostly through the trials that's the biggest thing and then on top of that on the side she's trying to figure out who murdered her grandfather and get revenge she's trying to hide her powers she's fighting against all of the discrimination from her classmates and peers and everyone this book was a very plot driven story I feel like it wasn't that much character driven I can see some character development and I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot more in the second book but this is a really plot focused book I feel like which I personally enjoy a lot. We follow her through all of these trials and the trials. I figured out that this was an adult book based on the first trial. I think the first trial that they faced was my favorite trial, but these trials that they face in order to become a Praetorian are really deadly, but they test combat, they test strength, strategy, stealth, and everything you need to be like a high elite secret ops kind of soldier and that first trial i was like oh we're really gonna do that to the character and show all of the blood and the gore and the gruesomeness huh and that's how i figured out that it was it was an adult sci-fi fantasy book because mm, that first trial put images in my mind that did not need to be there i it was really amazing to read but if we ever had like a apocalypse or anything and if that ever happened in real life i would freak out but so good to read about all of the blood and death and i don't want to spoil anything because i think the surprise of what is in the book is really really good but i do want to say the fantasy kind of element comes into play a lot in the trials because in this world the gods and goddesses have kind of abandoned them i believe or something like that but they have left behind monsters and creations and a lot of things in their world that are really deadly and you still have to fight against and that's also where Akena's powers come from and it's just the monsters perfection first trial I love it can I say any more about the first trial I don't think I could guess any more about the first trial yes very plot focused book if you really like a kind of unhinged character that just wants to kill everyone and you like blood death and gore I think this is the book for you. I know some people mention that the character might be a little too unhinged for them, but I personally didn't mind it. I think that she had a right to be angry and also she was still kind of trying to process the grief of her grandfather and everything. So I didn't take any points off of that. I personally really like unhinged characters. So I really like this. And also for those of you who kind of need a little romance in a book, because I do love a little romance in every book. This book does have a little romance. It's definitely a subplot. It's not the main focus of the book, but it is in there. And the book does get a little spicy. I also did follow the author on Twitter at one of these tweets. I was like, oh, I really hope this series, she did this to the series. So the tweet was, with each and every story, story I conceive, a major part of my pre-drafting work is to create an epic power couple I want to be endgame. My butt will shamelessly design whole plot points, whole world building elements, and whole pivotal conflicts in service of this mission. And it doesn't matter if I'm writing an actual romance or a sci-fi fantasy with a romantic subplot. Either way, this is happening and it's one of the major joys I get from writing. So... This is a sci-fi fantasy with a romance subplot, so I'm hoping that this... I'm just... Please, 
And um, you might have been able to tell as I was trying to describe this book, but the history of the world of this place, the world building, I guess, is a little confusing. And I don't think it's the author's fault. I was listening to this book on two times speed with the ebook open as well, because my ebook was about to get expired. And I was like, I gotta finish this. So I didn't have time to like, actually go back and read all of the things about the history and just the world itself but i don't think you have to if you just come for the vibes for the killing vibes and everything that's totally fine that was basically how i read it through and i think i got most of the major elements of the history understood i definitely want to do a reread about it before the second book comes out but i do want to point that out i know some people in the book club found that it was a little confusing the history and everything but yeah, I don't think I mentioned this was the book club pick for the genre soup book club that I'm a part of that helps co-host. And I'm so glad that we picked this book. But yeah, I don't think any of the parts really dragged for me. Once she pledges to try to be a Praetorian and everything, or like it picks up so much and it's just it's just really good. Maybe if you're not loving it in the first like 30 pages, just give it a little more until you hit the trials. And then also, besides Akena, I haven't really talked about any of the other characters. So Akena, we know she's like bloodthirsty and she's just awesome. She can kick butt. But then we also have two of her best friends and we kind of follow them as a group through the trials. But I feel like this book is mainly focused on Akena. We do have the romantic interest, I guess. And then we also follow some other characters. There are some annoying characters and there's this one particular character that if he got thrown off of a cliff by Akena, I would not care in the least bit at all. I was hoping this dude would just get murdered like early on in the book, like just off him. But um, yeah, that's so bad to say, but he was so racist and he was basically targeting Akena just because he was racist, he was sexist, and because Akena picked a fight with one of his buddies and kicked his butt basically <laughs> and that male ego in him could not let it go but he's one of the people who is kind of in charge of the trials so he's not actually one of the main characters or like a consistent character that keeps popping up to the point that it's really annoying it's just when he's there you're like can somebody just teach him a lesson already but honestly i forgot about him until he popped up again and i don't know it's just i love this book so much and i just feel like any davenport wrote the characters really well i really like akena and the characters that we find annoying you're like oh but they're written to be disliked so that did what it was supposed to do like it wasn't like a character that you're supposed to like anyways you're not supposed to like certain characters because of how they are i don't want to say anymore but also, besides the characters and the romance subplot, a lot of important topics are touched upon in this book, like racism and colonialism and sexism and elitism and classism. They're all touched upon in this book, and I think it's done really, really well. It's not kind of pushed onto the reader, like, oh, I have an agenda. It's just shown through the books of how all of these things are a problem and how it affects people and all of that. I thought it was done really, really well, and I think it all went in, like, seamlessly through the book, which is hard to do, I feel like, at some points, especially in sci-fi. So I really appreciated that, and yeah, I basically only have good things to say <laughs> really also in the beginning kind of middle part of the book i was like oh i think i might see where this book is gonna go like some of the things that will happen nope i was completely wrong like <laughs> i did see some things but like the major twists that happened I was not expecting that ending to the book. I'm excited to see how everything will unfold in the second book. There's just so much to fit into one book and I'm nervous. I'm really hoping the second book is also a five star read. There's just so much that still has to happen and I'm anxious to get to it. I believe it's coming out next year. So I will definitely be getting that. It is almost December and I've been really good about not buying as much books lately, but I really have to 
to get myself a physical copy of this book. Like, it's almost Christmas. I think I could treat myself to a couple physical books. I want to put my tabbies in there. I just have it on my shelf. And the cover is really, really pretty. And, um, yeah. I think N.E. Davenport has a short story in a sci-fi anthology that's out. Let me... Yeah, she has a story in a sci-fi and fantasy parenting anthology called Don't Touch That. And I kind of want to read it just to read her story and support. And it also seems really cool. It seems like it follows kind of the parents in sci-fi and fantasy. And like, don't touch that. It's like, don't touch that red self-destruct button. And you know the kid will always touch that. So it just seems like an interesting read anyways. So I'm thinking about picking that up. This book was also published this year, I believe. I think I saw a Kickstarter for trying to get it published on ebook. And I think they might also have a physical one coming out soon. I think right now only the ebook is available. But I believe it's like a self-pub kind of thing. So that's really, really cool. And yeah, I really fell in love with this book. And I hope this book review was at least semi-helpful. I'm not sure how book review -y it is, but I do hope it convinced some people to pick it up. And I think that's about all I have to say. I'll stop rambling now and see y'all. Bye!